there are at least a dozen different resources that we need as stress, as adversity increases in our life. Now the first, the first one is, interestingly, it's structure. As human beings, we seem to do better, especially under stress, when we have some sort of routine. If everything's chaotic at work, this is probably when you want to go home and at least have some structure and some continuity in your attachments in your life, and vice versa. Consequences are about ensuring we want to feel accountable in our lives. And we want to make sure that when we have something that goes wrong, that we're able to fix it. We don't get that, that consequence thing very well. We're very good on imposing structure, but not consequences. Imagine you go home this evening, and your spouse is just fuming mad with you. You left the house this morning and you didn't empty the dishwasher. Oh, you know. And they're standing at the door and they start this sort of, you know, little thing with you. I can't believe it. We've talked about this. We've, we've had this conversation many times. I do the dishes. I put them in. You take them out. I can't believe that you're treating me like this. I can't believe that you left the house again this morning and you didn't empty the dishwasher. I've had it. I've truly had it. That's it. Give me your cell phone now. What? Give me your cell phone, you're losing your cell phone for a week. <laughs> We'd go, I'm not giving you my cell phone. And yet, I mean, we know that example from working with children, right? We do this silly thing with consequences all the time. They do something over here and we do something over here as a consequence. With you, we as adults too, the number of times I'm thinking, like, if we do better when the consequence is related to what we've messed up. So if we're on a job site, I mean, ask, I mean, I think it's really important that with our employers, that with our colleagues, that if something is going wrong, that we're held accountable. We actually are more resilient when we're held accountable. But that that accountability must include an opportunity to fix our mistakes, and it also must be, the, the consequence must be known and it must be reasonable. Then we thrive. We still might make mistakes. God knows I do. We make mistakes, but we, in that environment, we tend to thrive because of the predictability and the reasonableness of the environment around us. We're not unduly harmed. We're not bitter about what we experience. The third thing we see all around the world, indeed, in resilience, is we need intimate and caring relationships in our lives. But I'm always amazed by sometimes we oversell that. We, 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 we say, OK, that is the only thing you need. And let me just be real clear. When our lives are in chaos, any one of these 12 things can actually dramatically influence and start us on a path towards wellness. But those intimate relationships are key. Let me give you, let me give you an example of how this looks in practice. I was on, a, I was on an airplane um, flying to South Africa a couple years ago, and I met a fellow in the seat uh, next to me. He was a, an exec at one of the um, uh, mining companies. And he talked about how they were having trouble in the deep, deep pit mines um, with workers who were aging, because of course as automation is taking over, they're not hiring as many young workers, they're mostly older workers, and the mines are becoming very automated. But these older guys, mostly it's men, are actually dying in the mine from overexertion. So they're getting older, but they're not slowing down, and they're kind of fearful for their jobs and all this kind of other stuff. And he said that they're actually killing themselves. And the, 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 work, the, the, the bosses, the owners, they don't want these guys to die. So what they proposed was putting heart monitors on the workers who were deep, deep, we're talking thousands of feet underground. And they wanted to put heart monitors on the, the men, and then what they would do is have somebody up top monitor their heart rates, and if it kind of went off the rails, then somebody could just tell them, hey, George, take 15, you know, just relax, it's okay, you know, no consequences or anything like that. Well, of course, the guys down there said, we're not wearing these damn heart monitors if our bosses up top are monitoring us. So then they said, okay, wait, how about this? We'll let the union reps monitor the heart, hearts of their workers. And the union guys went, are you crazy? We're not taking that liability and responsibility. We ain't doing this either. Well, so who do they give the heart monitors to? And eventually they figured it out. What they did was they gave the monitoring devices, the readouts, to the men's wives. And it was the wives at home who would watch these monitors. And the moment they kind of saw, you know, George's heartbeats were spiking or something like that, they would be sending the message down to George and they'd figured out a way to do this safely so that the miners would know that somebody's really caring about them and could they please take a break.